What's up and welcome back to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, March 3rd, 2023. Of course, I'm Tim Geddes, and for the very first time on this show, we're officially joined by Jeff Grubb. How is it going, man? I'm I'm happy to be here. This is fantastic. We were yeah, we were talking. I've never been on Kind of Funny Games Daily before. I love the show, so it's and about it's time. Been, how is that possible? You've been you made so know. many guest appearances, like millions of them, but this is the first time you're hosting the show with me. I'm very excited to have you here. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of of fun stuff. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I was uh, I started off. I ended yesterday with a bit of an ear infection. I felt like, and then I started today with it still happening. So I was wearing my. My funky little hat. I'm feeling a little bit better, actually. So I'm like, I'm ready to go. Um, yeah. I think I think it's going to be a good weekend. I think we're going to cap off Friday in in style, panache, all that stuff. I'm feeling oh, good. Good, good, good. I'm feeling good as well. Uh, we have a whole bunch of cool stuff that we're going to talk about today. It's Nintendo Switch's sixth birthday. So we're going to be celebrating that, getting a little bit nostalgic, looking back on the official original reveal of it all. We're going to talk about some Switch 2 rumors. Uh, we're going to talk about Detective Pikachu 2 being real, having a director, and so much more, because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday, we are live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames and youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. You can also get it later as a VOD on YouTube or roosterteeth.com, and you can get it as a podcast by searching your favorite podcast service for Kind of Funny Games Daily, and we'll be right there for you. If you wanted to get the show ad-free, though, and you wanted a whole bunch of bonus content, you gotta go to patreon.com slash kindoffunny, uh, just like our Patreon producer, Delaney twining has done a uh, little bit of housekeeping for you um over on patreon we have a whole bunch of cool stuff including a new episode of kind of feudy an episode of the shit list where blessing and i talk about ign's top 10 fighting games list and an upcoming episode of kind of funny next gen podcast that you're not going to want to miss uh and of course there is the new episode of the blessing show that we are still trying to get everybody to watch it is utterly fantastic and i want every single person on the entire planet to see that video um we're brought to you by hello fresh but i'll tell you about that later real quick I just want everybody out there to go send some sweet, nasty love to Greg Miller and Jen. Um, they are going through some stuff right now. Uh, so go hit them up on Twitter and, and show your love to them because they definitely could use it right now. Our hearts are with them and uh, we're going to give them whatever they need to help them get through everything going on. So we love you guys so, so love much. Love the Millers. Yep. Um, but for now, let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. We have four stories today. A beaker's dozen. The thing is with the four stories, though, there's actually like a couple point five stories. Like there's like multiple parts to each story. So we'll, we'll see where this all goes. But story number one, happy sixth birthday, Nintendo Switch. Jeff, can you believe it? I it's honestly, sometimes it's really, really hard to believe six years already. It still feels like the the way I like want to be playing games. It feels like the way that I want to uh uh, uh it, it just feels like so new and fresh to me like i get to take the games with me wherever i want play them how i want and it's so important to me that's like oh yeah this is this is what gaming should be that it, it still feels very novel in a lot of ways and then in other ways the system does feel uh, old and uh we, we've definitely have had a lot of time to get used to its shortcomings and so when you think about oh where am i going to be playing games at you already have the, the the list formulated in your head of the pros and cons for why you would play something on the Switch versus playing it somewhere else. Is it an indie game? Is, do you know it's going to probably run well? Well, that'd be great on Switch. Is it anything else? <laughs> probably not. And so being so familiar with it, it it has begun to start to feel like an old friend that is maybe six years old. Yes, that is that is a very, very good way to put it. But like, so six years of the Nintendo Switch, but let's just for a second go back to seven years ago, eight years ago. The rumors going in to the Nintendo Switch, because here we are now in 2023, every day talking about where's the Switch 2, where's the Switch Pro, what's going to happen. But do you remember the chaos, the utter insanity that went down in the lead into the Switch with all of the, the leaks, the rumors, the reflections from pictures? The people reflections. Saw? Like, like what, what is your like most core memories of that? I mean, so yeah, it's a couple like the NX and then that uh, that render of the oval thing that had the controls that would uh, actually get rendered up on the screen and you would touch it and be like, listen, I don't believe this, but Nintendo is just that wacky that maybe they, and then, you know, it, it's always with Nintendo, you talk yourself into something, you talk yourself out of it. Uh, we're going through all that again right now, but it's like. It, 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 that that is always what was happening then and it was especially bad then because uh, not only did we have 
um, a lot of rumors that were hard to verify. It was also a, like a rough period for Nintendo, so it was there was a lot of anxieties surrounding like the future of the company and whether they were going to be able to pull it out, which made everything so much worse. Uh, and then the other, I mean, that those reflections. And everyone would just be like, all right, this is, uh, what, what studio was it, Massive? Everyone yeah. thought it was Massive based on a tree reflected off a screen out a window. Uh, and we were all talking just, about that. <laughs> that stupid yes. tree. <laughs> uh, it's never going to leave my brain. I think about that every day, I think, almost. It's just like, I can't believe that that's what, where, we, where we're at. And it's like, we were down bad. We were down bad, and it and it showed. Yeah, and I mean, uh, Jeff, I know you just like me are a Nintendo guy, right? You you are oh, yeah. the last of the Nintendo dogs, last I heard. And That's uh, damn right. I, you know, we did, I imagine that similar to me, you suffered through the Wii U era, but found a lot of joy there. <laughs> just you know, it was a joy at, in in a, in a weird Nintendo decision type of way, right? Yeah, I got I got my Wii U day one. I didn't have it pre ordered. I went and found one of the white ones, so it didn't even have the bigger hard drive i'm like whatever I, you know it's, i get a nintendo system on day one i haven't done that since the n64 this is great and uh the, I, I there were a lot of great games on there and it was a fun system and i really liked its concept because i like letting my family watch tv while i sit with them and play games like that is that to me that is a you know connection and that's being that's closeness and it, I, so i really appreciated that and then i would try to take the thing with me into my bedroom or in, into the into the bathroom and it wouldn't work and I'd get mad at the thing. I'm like, how, how are you so bad at this thing you're supposed to be good at? Um, and then they released the Switch, of course, and solved all those problems. But it was like, it was definitely a, a love-hate relationship that leaned way more into love for me with the Wii U. Yeah, I mean, the games to me spoke for themselves. Like, they're, not everything was on it, but as we've seen with the Switch now, years later, so many great games have been ported and enhanced and even better on the Switch. Um, and I've loved revisiting those experiences or some of them playing for the first time. But I remember when the Wii U like first came out and was like really going like, you know, there, there was novel ideas there of like being able to play with this screen and having the, the controller yeah. like be part of the screen and all of that. And I remember uh, the lengths people would go when Wind Waker HD came out. Uh, I remember my friends would uh, took flew to Austin and literally brought the wii u and plugged it into the airplane and was playing on yes. the airplane and it was yes, just I like stories like that it, it was just such a disaster though like where it's just like at any moment you know how power and uh, the air sure. works where it just like, disconnects and i can remember him playing and then it just crashed and it just turned off and he was so upset but it's like eh, that's what you get and then just a few short years later we're playing breath of the wild i'll never forget being next to danny o'dwyer on a, a, a flight to pax east and um, he was just sitting there, and I don't think we said a single word to each other for, like, the six-hour flight because we're both just in Hyrule, like, <laughs> separately. And, like, the, then the plane lands, he looks over at me, and he was like, hey, this is magic, right? I'm like, yes, it's it magic. is. You know? And, yes. like, I just uh, – going back to the rumors, right, like, I, we, we heard it was going to be this hybrid console, and it just felt unbelievable. It was like, okay, I just – I can't fathom how that's going to work, especially from Nintendo. Where it's like the tech, it just, there's no way it's gonna work, right? They're probably driving Nvidia crazy with all of their the requests and and way it, it would be really good if it was just this. And like Nintendo's like, well, listen, we need we're Nintendo, we need to Nintendo this up in a lot of major ways. And it's like, oh man, I bet Nvidia's tearing their hair out. Uh, and it's like, well, I mean, the reality is is that the thing came out and it was pretty straightforward and and had a lot of answers immediately to the questions you would have for it. It's like, oh yeah, you just. You plug it in the dock, it's going to work on the TV. You take it off the dock, it's going to work. Is it going to have a lot more power when you put it in the dock? No, a little bit, mostly just because it's coming. It's going to have uh, better cooling. It's going to be able to uh, get draw power from the wall. So they're going to let you have a little bit more clock speed. Mostly it's going to be the same exact thing. It's like, okay, so that, that's going to make it easier on developers. It's, it's like you start putting the pieces together really quickly because it was a compelling story, obviously, by the way it's sold. But man, yeah, that Breath of the Wild, I got that for review right as like the month after my first daughter was born, they sent me a switch in February and Breath of the Wild. And I'm just playing with this baby on my, this little glob on my chest and I'm playing Breath of the Wild nonstop uh, for, for, for weeks. And I remember uh, Mike Minotti being so mad cause I got the review unit and he had to go to GDC and he really didn't want to go. <laughs> so I'm like, ah, this is even better. And it, it was absolutely magic. And I, I don't think that much of that um, and you know the game obviously magical, but I don't this, the magic of the system. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's waned too much. It yeah. actually has. It is so compelling that it's it's been able to like maintain that narrative this entire time, and it's why this is going to be the first Nintendo system that's had a billion pieces of software sold. They've never done that before. Um, Sony's done that almost every single time. Now, of course, Sony gets the help of big big games like Call of Duty. Yeah. Um, but but 
this is going to be the first time Nintendo's done it with a, with a with a system, and it's deservedly so because it's actually a really great place to play a lot of kinds of games. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, you talking about the just the, the the magic not waning at all, but like there's very few moments in the history of video games where something comes out and everybody needs to get their hands on it and try it out just to see like everyone says it works but does it really work that well and it was one of those moments where i remember getting the review unit and like it, people want were like flocking to come to to kind of funny to try to just get their hands on it and like like just see how it goes from being docked to undocked and that one motion was like oh my god it works how the hell does it actually work and then for them to follow up with so many quality games is just like such a such a, a one-two punch, a one-two switch, if you will. Uh, and even with that, like, there was so many weird Nintendo choices then where it's like you look at the, the launch lineup of uh, the Switch and it was like, great, we had Breath of the Wild. But then we also had weird Nintendo shit, you know? Yep. Yeah, I mean, I remember uh, the like trying to figure out that the dock situation was like, okay, third-party docks. If you use them, your Switch will die. And that was like the story for the first like two years or something. And uh, eventually, third-party manufacturers figured that stuff out, and it isn't much of an issue anymore. But it was like, man, for a long time, they're like, don't don't use any of them. They're all going to destroy your Switch. And then one comes along, it's like they like did all this research to figure out how the Switch is using power delivery over USB-C. It's like, what? Nintendo, how do you mess this up so bad? Yeah. USB-C is supposed to be easier. It's supposed and to you be made it universal. So complicated and worse. Universal. <laughs> and you made it so much worse and bespoke. You're God, you're a weird company. Oh, man. So, you know, we're, we're, we're talking a lot about this. We're getting nostalgic. I want to go back to where it all began. Uh, we, there was that tweet that just came out where we saw Creepy Mario, like, uh, popping out. And, like, we knew the Switch reveal was coming. We were so excited after all these rumors, after the reflection of the tree and all of that. And then we got the infamous commercial. I haven't seen this commercial in six years. So I feel like it might be a little bit of fun for me and you to watch the, the, uh, the Switch reveal trailer one more Let's time. Let's do it. Three minutes and 37 seconds. I don't remember it being this long. Yeah, it dropped in like, they, there's like, it's always like a couple different stories, right? Like this guy with the dog, or this guy with the dog, but he like goes to a park. Yeah. I don't know, we'll see. But it's like this, this came out that December, right? This was the December thing. Yes, and then right. the system dropped in March, and there was that the Switch presentation oh. Oh. Uh, in between the reveal and the launch. Get fun music. Uh huh. Oh, October twenty. Uh, they're saying October. 20th. Okay, October. Okay, thank you, everybody. We're getting up and we're on the go. Yeah, like they're like yeah, have the uh, on the go music. So that's how you know. So that's how you know. And a full console experience, man. Like, and it, the fact that this actually works as well as this commercial shows is mind blowing. Yeah, and tell me, which ones have you done? You've played uh, Switch at the park, yes or no? I have. Me I too. Have. Yes. The glare was Switch not to the fun, airport, of course. Airport, definitely. Airplanes yes. every single time. Have oh. you have you done this where you set up as a stand? Oh yeah. And play it yes i did this uh, on an air on a flight with someone and i handed her the other controller yeah and i, I played it we played some games i can't even remember what we were playing yeah this was that's my standard is i, I do the kickstand thing but i normally use the pro controller right there it is oh yeah and skyrim skyrim being one of the first games which of course that's, it is that's wacky this thing oh god I, <laughs> this thing the little bar that they slide it into so you could see it or so you could have it uh, held up in the back seat of a car did Great. they ever even sell anything like that no of course you got to go play mario kart at the uh -huh. the real life kart all right now this one playing basketball with the bros <laughs> and then and then you drop down two systems on the picnic table while everyone else keeps playing basketball so you play nba 2k hilarious <laughs> But this was such a good commercial because it just showed off the versatility of this thing and like how it all can connect in different, like the multitude of ways. And then our first look at Mario Odyssey, yes, just it, a brief, like four seconds or so, but it was like, oh my God, it's a return to the 64 style. This is going to be incredible. And, then, and it was. And there's rooftop party. We, we got go. a rooftop party, but you don't have to stop playing Mario. <laughs> Because you're you're sociable and and you're good at having friends. God, it's so funny. And we all made fun of this, but then so many people did it. Yep. Oh, that's right. There's the the Splatoon esports stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> Nintendo is a big esports company, so this just makes sense. <laughs> Still trying with this one. Uh huh. That's right. They do still do Splatoon esports tournaments. Yeah. <laughs> it would be funny if Nintendo, like the, the video ended, and Nintendo just breaks down the door and like, no, this isn't sanctioned. You're not allowed to do this. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Too real. <laughs> yeah. And then this was. Uh, we didn't know that it was Splatoon two. It was just more Splatoon at the time. Mm hmm. Like the, sna the snapping yeah. sound. Even down to the sound. That. They got it. And what a comeback story after the Wii U, <laughs> you know, for them yeah. to, to do that. And here we are six years later. So uh, from that, Jeff, this week, I mean, you know, I say this week, it might as well be any week. There's some rumors going around about uh, a yes, successor are. to the Nintendo Switch. And as often happens, some of those words have come out of your mouth. So yeah, I was like, you know what? happen. I, I want I want Jeff to to be here and to to give his side of the story here. I appreciate that. I don't. I I like. I you know the truth is, if I have heard something, I I want to tell people. I want people to know what's going on as as best as I can inform them. Uh, and sometimes that'll come with a million caveats, and then that'll go through a game of telephone, and it all just gets stripped away to the thing that people want to hear. Um, I'll say that it just feels like things are lining up again to have something happen sooner rather than later by the end of this year. But I, I can't confirm it. Like, that's the big thing is I, I heard one way that we were going to uh, um, uh, we might get it announced this year, announced this year. I couldn't confirm that. And then we get, we get that 4chan leak that turns out like, well, it's actually mostly confirmed. And it says that they're working on an update for Pokemon DLC 2. That is going to go along with a, with new Switch model uh, to improve the graphics. Uh, okay, the, the, man, I don't want to start believing again, but here we are. Here uh, we I, are. I think I, I think it's still on the table that we get something Switch, not not Pro, uh, but it, maybe even not necessarily Switch Two. Uh, maybe something like in between that is definitely like an actual upgrade in terms of hardware, but in terms of the way that Nintendo positions it. It feels like they could try to do like to, to straddle the line a little bit and do like a super switch that continues the generation in a way that is more significant than they've done since the Game Boy Color, uh, but even more significant than that. And yeah. the, the big the thinking there clearly is they have Nintendo Switch Online. They have a lot of subscribers. They have a lot of people who are spending a lot of money buying video games, and they don't want to disrupt or, or lose any of that momentum because all the other companies have figured out how to maintain it. And they don't want to be the one company like restarting from zero. We all know that they, they've said as much publicly in earnings reports that they don't want to restart that. The whole idea is to now build on that going forward. Um, it, but I think Nintendo's not sure how to pull that off. So I, that, I think it's been one of the reasons that they have pushed off things like a Switch Pro previously. Because they're like, well, what does our plan look like when we actually try to trans transition people to, a, to new hardware, which we are going to want to do eventually and pro probably relatively soon. I, I it seems like now that they are formulating a plan and that that plan probably will get, go into motion possibly later this year. But again, I just, I just don't know. I, I, and when I say that, it's like, I don't even believe myself. So I don't blame anyone for, for not believing me either. <laughs> I love you so much, Jeff. Kev, That's can you bring truth. up the, uh, uh, the switch to rumors, uh, Twitter link that I have there? Um, the thing that Jeff was referencing there is on, on 4chan, which of course is the like least reliable thing ever. Um, but every once in a while, Somebody gets something right. And I remember when the, the Switch presentation first happened, somebody on 4chan had a list of all the games that were going to be there. And it felt weird where it's like, what the hell? The, what, there's going to be an Ultra Street Fighter 2? That doesn't make sense. A Super yep. Bomberman, whatever. And it, it happened. It was real. Um, but here we have um, this, this leak that has some uh, credibility to it because the leak is actually about the Pokemon Presents that we got last week. And they nailed it. <laughs> like some of the the words are wrong. Like uh, there's something to talk about hexagon here, and that there was no reference of hexagon in the uh, the Pokemon Presents itself. But um, what the DLC is, the um, legendaries that they were going to include, and all of that, they they nailed it. And in it, they referenced that th there's going to be a, uh, a, a a patch for Pokemon to enhance it to go along with new Switch hardware. And there could be translation issues there. There's so many right. things and that it could a be. A lot of different, like, subtle meetings uh, that, that maybe they're working on it for DLC, too, because that's when this company is done 
working on this Pokemon game, and so they want it ready for whenever Nintendo hardware launches, right? There are a million reasons to read this, a million ways to read it in a way that it's like, the timing might not mean anything. Everything else, everything else could be true, but the timing might not be significant. Yeah, absolutely. So now going, get, getting out of like what you've heard and what you know and everything, now it's just pure, 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 just speculation on your part. How do you see the Switch life cycle going from here on out? We have Zelda Tears of the Kingdom in May. Do we get, bi do we get a, a big Mario game on the Switch? Do we get it this year? No, I, I don't think so. I, I think that they are happy to let uh, or Tears of the Kingdom be the, the big capper. And then they will sort of, I, honestly, I think what happens is uh, the, uh, the other big game that comes out to the Switch, other than, you know, there's gonna be a lot of other smaller stuff, but the other big game, at least for as far as we're concerned, uh, maybe not Nintendo, but as far as we're concerned, would be Metroid Prime 4. And I do think that is, especially with, you know, they just launched Metroid Prime Remastered, they're doing Fusion, they're kind of like building up momentum for Metroid. And then I think they announce here pretty soon, Metroid Prime 4, it's re-reveal and it's coming at this date at some point within the next 12 months. And so then I think with that game in place, I think they will be happy to say, okay. And then as that game either comes out and is cross-generational or it's just on the Switch, one or the other, who, who knows? Uh, we are now prepared to begin shifting all of our resources in terms of marketing <laughs> and, and, and and development, uh, which has already happened, I'm sure for the most part, but we're ready to shift everything to the follow-up to the Switch. And I think that comes right <laughs> around that same time as Metroid Prime 4. Um, yeah. So it, it like it, that feels right. It feels it feels in line with what we've heard from people about how Nintendo won't have a ton in the second half of this year, at least big things. And I think those people, the people who've said that, don't think Metroid Prime Four is a big thing based on its sales numbers. So uh, it all lines up for me. Uh, but I, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think there's a lot of credibility to what you're saying there. I my gut tells me we're getting a Mario. I just feel like with the year that we're having here uh, with Nintendo, with Super Nintendo World, with the Mario movie, it's been so long since we've had a 2D Mario. I keep saying it. And it's been, yeah, uh, that's at true. this point, really long since we've had a 3D Mario. I mean, we had Bowser's Fury. Um, Bowser's Fury, I think, is going to be the little, the caveat there. But I agree. You're, yeah. you're right, though. And yeah. Bowser's Fury was incredible. Like, I loved that. And clearly, that was a test bed for something, whether that is the end of the line of that test, or if that is kind of like a hint at what the next Mario is gonna be, I, I just feel like we're due for a Mario, and like especially a 2D one, which sells so well, uh, where the last new 2D Mario we got was New Super Mario Bros. U on yep. the launch of the Wii U, right? Uh, and even that game selling as well as it did on the re-release with the deluxe port, I just feel like there, it has to be coming. Um, going off what you're saying about Metroid real quick, Kev, if you can bring up what I'm calling Story 1.5, uh, Metroid Fusion, uh, got a, a fun little trailer announcing that it is coming to uh, Nintendo Switch Online and the GBA side of it on March 9th, um, a day before Mario Day. Um, and God, just seeing this trailer, Jeff, like it just brings yeah. me back. I can't wait to play this again. And my favorite thing is right here, Metroid 4. This just gave me all the good feelings thinking back to last year, getting Metroid 5, Metroid Dread, baby. Yeah, I don't know if games ever needed to look better than this. This is just so, it's so beautiful. It looks so good. It moves so well. The gameplay is so, so great. They um, mix, they messed up with the structure a little bit with, with for Fusion, where they're like, we're going to sort of uh, um, push you around a little bit more, but that's going to enable you to like see so many more things and for us to tell a little bit more of a story and still in that Metroid way where it's mostly you're going to like stumble across something and it's going to feel atmospheric and scary. It's a scary game. Oh, yeah, it's 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 so good. I just played it again in the last couple of years and I'm, I'm ready to go back again. Metroid Fusion rules. I, I just I love Metroid so much and it's uh, I, it, I just really hope that this isn't some false start towards Metroid Prime 4. Yeah, and that, you know, that's the thing. It's like, we got Dread, and Dread was awesome. Like, the fact that that game existed, came out, and was as good as it was, and to, to lead into here, to lead into Prime Remastered being out. And, like, uh, I was just talking to uh, uh, Andre Seegers from uh, Game Explain a couple days yeah. ago uh, about, like, how wild is it that Metroid Prime and Metroid Fusion came out on the same day? on the GameCube yeah. and Game Boy Advance. Like, what a different time. And uh, for Metroid to uh, have missed a generation at that point, too. Like, they there was no Metroid on N64. Uh, and for them to to come out and just both the games be as bangers as they were. And now here we are so, so later. And we're, Metroid Prime 4 is imminent? I don't know. Like, I'm with you where I, I feel like it has to be sooner than than we would assume. Like, I feel like... Within the next 
15 once. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's, I think it's, that sounds right. That sounds like the right number where we can kind of give ourselves a little wiggle room where it's like, it's not going to be this holiday, maybe, 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 but I, I don't necessarily think so. Uh, but I do think it's not much longer than that. For one, I mean, you just look at the circumstantial evidence, right? The thing was rebooted four years ago. Uh, we are coming up to the end of the Switch. They don't have a lot of other stuff announced. Uh, they've been holding off on this. They had Metroid Prime remastered in their pocket for a very long time. I, I was saying that for forever, and then the game came out, and then we saw in the, the like the German rating thing. It's like the thing the thing was rated in like 2021. They've had the thing in their pocket for forever, and it's like, well, okay, if they were holding on to it for so long, why why now? Other than to mess with me over the holidays and have me cut my hair, of course, uh, of course. So yeah, and it's okay. Well, I mean, they 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 have a reason. They don't really do these things just because like, well, now we're we, it's it's hot potato and it's it's so hot now we have to just put it out there. They have a, a, a lot of thinking that goes into how they want to approach this marketing and how they want to approach building up excitement. And uh, that's not to say that Nintendo is always rational or does things because they need to. Sometimes they will just do things because they want to. But it's like, eh, I, I don't see them pulling these triggers and not having Metroid Prime 4 at least ready to talk about in the very near, near future. I think they will do the re-reveal here. I think the next time we get a big Nintendo Direct, I think it's there. And then, because I think that's the big game in the next Nintendo Direct, and then we go from we go from there, and it's probably six to, six to nine months after that. So, yeah. yeah, the next the next twelve to fifteen months, I think we do get it. Uh, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot here. You can answer this however you want to answer Please. this yeah, no to problem. protect yourself. But now the Metroid Prime Remastered is real. It's out. We're playing it. The other things you've talked about, the the Zelda yeah. ports, any other port, Prime Two and Three. Where are you at right now with all those things? I'm pretty frustrated. It's uh, you know I've heard I heard about those Zelda ports. It was a Zelda two pack of Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD from the Wii U bundled together for sixty dollars. Uh, and I heard about that years and years ago. And it's uh, and it wasn't just like one source. It was like three people telling me this. And I'm like, man, that that sounds about right. I mean, it's a little bit weird. Nintendo likes to. Uh, capitalize on their games and separate them and sell. But I mean, they sold Metroid Prime for forty dollars and, and and Mario All Stars, three D All Stars. Yeah, Mar exactly. So it's like it's not completely unprecedented. And uh, they had Skyward Sword remaster. It's like their big new one. And those, whatever, whatever the, the structure would have been, maybe they would have came out separately eventually. But it's like I've always heard they, it's it's been done and it's sitting there. It's ready to go. Why they wouldn't put it out? Zero idea. No idea. It doesn't make any like last year they didn't. They said they wanted to have a big Zelda release every year, and last year they didn't have one, right? Because Skyward Sword came out in twenty twenty one. So it's, it's I, I would have just expected again based on circumstantial evidence at that point that it would have made made sense for last year. Now, when we had that big show where we said uh, here's what's happening in the direct, and we said that was happening, that was a mistake in when it came to the Zelda. The Metroid stuff I always did hear for sure. There was miscommunication on the Zelda stuff, so. If like going back to that, it's like, well, no, then I guess we don't necessarily know what's happening with this with, with these games anytime soon. But going back before that, like I said, I've always heard they're ready, they're sitting there, we're just waiting for Nintendo to pull the trigger. When they will, why they will, who knows? And then uh, last question I have for you, just because I'm very curious, if you've heard anything, what's Grezel working on? When when are we getting the yeah. Link's Awakening follow up or whatever that looks like? I, I mean, I don't know. I think they're probably working on another top down 2D Zelda game in the in the vein of, of Link's Awakening, but that's just a guess. I wish I knew. I, it, it's like, man, what was the timing look like on, on that? Do they is that something they could just release really quickly here at the end of the Switch's generation, or do they start saving stuff for the next thing? I, Nintendo obviously likes to save a lot of stuff, so we'll see. But I, I, I personally hope it is um, a sequel 2D Zelda game. I, I know a lot of people want the Oracle remakes, and I think that be that would be cool. I think it would be even cooler if we let that team sort of take what they did with Link's Awakening and then do it again, but with uh, with a wow. new game that is maybe more even more inspired by uh, Link Between Worlds, one of the best games ever made. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to get back to more stories, but before we do that, here's a word from our sponsors. Shout out to HelloFresh for sponsoring this episode. Remember those New Year's goals you promised yourself that you'd stick to? Well, HelloFresh is here to help you eat better by delivering fresh ingredients and easy recipes right to your door, taking the hassle 
out of dinner time. Fast and Fresh recipes, HelloFresh's latest line of meals featuring robust flavors and filling portions are ready in less than 15 minutes, so you can enjoy taste and quality done quick with recipes like falafel power bowls, seared steak and potatoes with Bernays sauce, or Southwest pork and bean burritos. A ton of us here at Kind of Funny have been using HelloFresh for years. Kevin loves how easy it is to get Paula vegetarian options, while I just love how quick the Fast and Fresh recipes come together during a hectic day in the studio. Go to HelloFresh.com slash KindaFunny65 and use code KindaFunny65 for 65% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash KindaFunny65 and use code KindaFunny65 for 65% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. The newest episode of my video essay series, The Blessing Show, is out right now on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, and it's all about black hair in video games. Black representation is complex compared to alien frogmen. I'm sure it's way easier to conceptualize this than a fade. Elden Ring is the highest selling new IP in years, and I guarantee you, From Software and Bandai Namco understands that their audience extends internationally. When given the option to create a black character, I'd like to create a version of myself that doesn't look like a Lil Nas X thing lead for Fall Out Boy. For many, I'm sure this seems like a very minuscule and specific thing to complain about. There's plenty of noteworthy areas of improvement the games industry can still make, even in just the area of representation and inclusion. So why is black hair when to harp on? Well, for folks who just listen to me on podcasts and have never seen a kind of funny video before, surprise, I'm black. Check it out over on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. And we're back. Jeff, during the break, you you brought up something to me. What what is it? Yeah, so uh, on our on our show, uh, Game Mess Decides, uh, we, me and Mike Minotti, did a video game draft for the thirty two and sixty four bit generation. And oh, you took mean the, turns... the fifth generation of video games? Oh, I will uh, listen. I'm I coming to that right now. I'm with you. I yeah, hate cool. that shit. Oh boy, that's some nerd stuff right there. It's <laughs> driving me crazy. Um, it's so we basically take turns picking games from uh, the Sega Saturn, uh, Sony PlayStation, Nintendo sixty four, and and we came up with the stuff. He went first. We had we had two game or two systems each with or I'm sorry one system each, but with twelve games total, and we put it up to a vote to see who uh, which which console people would prefer. And I mean, listen, I don't want to like spoil anything, but I was kind of wondering if you wanted to pick one. Oh yeah, based on the games that we selected. Oh yeah. Uh, All right, I'm going to read them here. I requested access for the doc if you want. Okay, you know what? I'm, yeah. I'll send you a screenshot so people could see it, but I'll start reading it as well. No Let me problem. Uh, just. No problem at all. That'll probably be easier for you. Uh, okay, so there's console A and console B, just to keep it completely fair. Okay. Uh, and it, and again, 12 games each. So here we go. From console A, it's Final Fantasy VII, Super Mario 64, Final Fantasy VIII, GoldenEye 007, Paper Mario, Wave Race 64, Majora's Mask. WWF No Mercy, Super Smash Brothers, Vagrant Story, Final Fantasy Tactics, and Street Fighter Alpha 3. For console B, you have Ocarina of Time, Metal Gear Solid, Resident Evil 2, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, oh. Tekken 3, Gran Turismo 2, Banjo Kazooie, Final Fantasy 9, Einhander, Crash 3 Warped, Suikoden 2, Suikoden, Suikoden 2, and Ridge Racer Type 4. Oh my now, God. If you need any like clarifications on any of that, let me know. It's a tough choice. I know. Oh, I want to know this which is console. This is Only so one. hard to choose because I am such a Mario person that Mario sixty four to me is so important that it out rules so many other games. But my God, you're gonna put Symphony of the Night and Metal Gear Solid. Oh shit. There's some bangers on both, but yeah. I mean, the Tank bangers there. Is it's, yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. You know? Ah, oh, man. I got I got to go A. I got to go vote A. Got to go vote, vote A? Yeah. I'll say that uh, Console A has won the poll so far on Twitter, 52 to 48%. Console A right. was your boy, Jeff Grubb. So once again, pulling in the winds. I'm basically Kevin Costner from Draft Day, everybody. I Look out, it. watch I out. Love it. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Mike freaked out. He thought he had it locked down. He was so sure he was going to win. And when he lost, he didn't handle it well. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I, think, I think Mike Minotti might be a sore loser. I'm not sure. I think he might be. So it's, it's a fun one. It's a fun draft. Uh, so if everyone wants to listen to that, it's a good time. Yeah, go check that out for sure. That's, that is awesome. I, I, I'm going to listen to that later. Uh, moving on to story number two. Uh, Microsoft and Activision Blizzard meet UK Watchdog to heal $69 billion deal rift. This comes from Catherine Jemmel and Leah Nyland at Bloomberg. 
Uh, Microsoft and Activision met with UK's antitrust watchdog this week to hash out proposals over concerns. Their $69 billion deal would hamper competition in the video game industry, according to people familiar with the discussions, as global regulators step up their scrutiny of the controversial deal. Lawyers for Microsoft attended a private hearing with the Competition and Markets Authority in London on Monday to discuss the regulators' provisional findings and access the feasibility of proposed remedies, said the people, who asked not to be named discussing a confidential matter. Uh, Spokespeople at Microsoft and CMA declined to comment. Activision Blizzard separately met with the CMA on Wednesday on the proposals. A further hearing with Sony Corp, the main opponent to the deal, is scheduled for next week, the people have said. The London meetings were led by the case's independent inquiry group with support from the case team, said the people. Uh, The CMA will publish its final decision on the merger on April 26th. The company's plan to submit a revised proposal to EU authorities this week following the closed doors discussion, the people said. The commission extended the deal review deadline to April 25th. The U.S. Federal Trade Commission is locked in a lengthy legal process after suing to veto the transaction. So we've been talking about this endlessly for the last couple months. Same here. Now now that we have this kind of like there's some motion, there's some actual dates, there's facts. Where are you at with this? Yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm in a position where I'm, like, I'm looking at it, and the question a few weeks ago was, how serious is Microsoft going to be about this? Are they going to see it through? I think that question's answered. It feels like they're going to see it through. Yeah. So then the ball shifts back to, to PlayStations, to Sony. Are How obstinate are they going to be? And then they start trying to think it through, and it's like they are in a position where it seems like they could be fully obstinate. They could be just, just nothing but an obstacle because – strategically and this is to jim ryan's credit i think they have spotted a uh, a, a, they they spotted ground where they could stand and say we are going to go to regulators and point out all the issues and we are going to be a little bit annoying and we are going to be a thorn in microsoft's side Mm -hmm. uh because because what's at risk here and you would say well what's at risk is there's that 10-year deal for call of duty on the table and well what if they don't sign that it won't microsoft come back at them afterwards if the deal gets fully approved by the ftc and all these other regulators and say well now you have to accept whatever we say we're microsoft uh, that's almost certainly not going to happen i think microsoft knows it needs to say in the good graces even after the after the deal's approved because it's not like regulators stop being able to regulate once the deal's approved they yeah. actually still have a lot of say over these things once they're actually live and it would hurt microsoft's trust in the future so i think sony knows that their that that deal that is on the table is going to be on the table no matter what, and they can whenever they're ready to go sign it, they can go sign it even after everything is approved, even if they lose everything. But if they stay in the way and these things keep causing problems, and the deals even if it's a small percentage point uh, at this point that the deal is going to fall through, it still seems like strategically sound for them to just be like, no, we're going to keep getting in the way because what if it does fall through and we get that big windfall of making sure that this deal uh, that they don't get Call of Duty and we can keep keep things the status quo. So that's I continue to read this as Sony's going to keep doing what they've been doing. Microsoft's going to keep trying to push it through. It does feel like it's leaning towards once again towards Microsoft being able to make it happen. Um, I, but that still comes down to timelines and you know whether or not Microsoft really wants to deal with all three regulators at once. I I think that the 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 big thing that the big question here is the CMA in the UK. If the CMA begins showing any signs of sort of letting up. I think that at that point, Sony does go, you know what, never mind. We're, we're just going to sign the deal. Let's just get this over with. As long as the CMA continues to be a, like a real big sticking point, I think both sides are just going to hold the ground until the end here. Yeah. Well, we will keep you updated on this as it progresses. Um, but I'm going to move on to a story that I'm really, really excited about. Story number three. This is cool. Legendary Taps, Jonathan Crystal to direct Pokemon Detective Pikachu sequel. This comes from Justin Kroll at Deadline. Portlandia co-creator Jonathan Crystal is in negotiations to direct the Pokemon Detective Pikachu live-action sequel based on the globally popular Pokemon franchise. Uh, the original pick was directed by Rob Letterman and starred Ryan Reynolds, Ken Watanabe, Justice Smith, and Catherine Newton. It was released by Warner Brothers. Y'all already know the story. Um, and while no deals are done at this time and nothing's confirmed, insiders believe Reynolds will have some part to play in the upcoming sequel, though that is undetermined right now. Let me tell you, Jeff Grubb. I woke up this morning and I was like, what am I going to wear today? And I opened my closet and I was like, you know what? I'm going to wear the most obnoxious shirt I have ever seen in my (laughs) life. It is this holographic Mewtwo shirt. Okay. You you look like you should be 
in a little card sleeve around Jake Paul's neck. That's oh what you look God, like. hundred <laughs> percent. So, so with this, I saw it online. I got Instagrammed, and I was like, I need to buy this shit. So I did, of course. And it, it did come with a Pokemon card of this. That's like a, a custom one, and I, I enjoyed that quite a bit. But this is the first time I'm wearing it, and I put it on, and I looked myself in the mirror, and I was doing my hair like I do mm -hmm. every day, and I was looking at my Mewtwo, and I'm like, we were robbed of a Detective Pikachu two sequel. Mewtwo was in Detective Pikachu 1. I can't believe they did that. And I'm starting to go through this whole thing in my head. And then I get here to prep the show, and this news drops. I feel like I brought this upon us. So you're welcome, everybody. Okay? A better, a better world is possible, and Tim Geddes can make it a reality. That's uh, it. I, That's it. This is, this is great. I, I, that first movie is uh, one that uh, I did not think it was bad, but I also say it wasn't super memorable, but there were so many good things happening in it in terms of the way the Pokemon looked and the way the, they developed the world. Mm -hmm. And I wanted more of it. And it, hey, it sounds like they're they're pushing towards this. Do you think this is in the um the video game movie zone where it could still never happen? Or, oh, yeah. or do you think like this is pushing towards a reality? I think it's it's pushing towards reality. You know, I feel like it was uh um a little iffy. They, they announced Detective Pikachu 2 a long time ago, but then it kind of felt like it got canceled at some point. Because Detective Pikachu 1 didn't do that well like it right it compared to how i expected it to perform it really kind of uh didn't hit the mark uh in terms of the box office but uh we also need to remember the fact that it was uh coming out right around disney's aladdin lion king avengers endgame like all of this stuff so it kind of got drowned a little bit um and also D D detective pikachu is like a weird way to, to market it but undeniably the character designs were incredible the world that they built the like neon aesthetic that they had i want so much more of that and with the way that the movie ended i could see them making a sequel that is a bit more traditional of a pokemon story and like, yes i agree that's the dream come true for me so uh i'm i'm really really hopeful for that but like we're, we're big dreamers here isn't that right sancho west you know, so the boy Sancho West is here. He's going to be hanging out with us all day. And uh, he has some dreams that he wants to make happen. <laughs> Come on, Naughty Dog. Factions win, okay? Factions win. You Right now, you have the hottest show in HBO history. Give us the trailer. Factions win. Thank you. That your, is my time. Your dream will come true, for sure, at some point. Grub, when do you think we're getting factions? Uh, never, because they, you just did that. It's going to be the same thing as when I did uh, the Metroid thing, and they delayed it. So, sorry, Sancho. You messed up big time. <laughs> you gotta, gotta love it, man. Uh, story 3.5, real quick, Kev. If you could just bring up the, the poster uh, link that I sent there. Um, we've been doing updates on the Pokemon anime. I was talking about it yesterday. But uh, the new anime that starts in April with the new protagonists, uh, we're starting to get more info on that. We just got a little trailer in a, showing off a post Ash Ketchum world. Um, and this, can you bring up the poster, Kev? Um, the poster, we kind of see a bit more. I don't know if Kev's there. Oh, there it is. Um, there, there it is. Yeah. Can you scroll down, Kev? Because I want to see the bottom of this, this poster. Because we get to see our boy Captain Pikachu in the bottom right. I yes, can't wait God, to I meet love, this little. Fuck. I love that little freak. <laughs> oh man, look at this guy. Gotta love it. Are, are you a Pokemon guy, Grub? Uh, off and on. I, I, I enjoy Pokemon uh, when I do play it. I really uh, liked Arceus. I really liked Arceus a ton. Uh, it was a good time. I, what'd you guys do with the uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet on your top ten? I, I don't know. I never got to, got around to listen to your top ten. But whenever we talk about it, Mike Minotti brings up you guys putting on your top ten. And uh, and and then he laughs or something. Yeah. He's very mean about it. He's a very mean person. Oh, I get that. I understand that. And we yeah. we, we deserve being mean too, uh, for <laughs> sure. But um, I think it came in at number ten for us. Okay, that I had it right. really that's high, okay. but that's because I'm a bad person. But sure, um, I've been saying this. I, I am a, a born again Pokemon master, and uh, it was Scarlet and Violet that got me like all in. So um, I understand. The I game have has Scarlet many and Violet, issues. and I want to. I want to. I want to play it. So I'm gonna like, hit you. With some, hit you, and then Goldfarb for some tips. Oh, 100 percent, hundred. Yeah, because I, I, I completed the damn Pokedex. I did it all, Grub. That's and it's that is inc that's impressive. It's, that's what that is. It's disgusting, is what it is. Um, story number four to close out the show's news. Capcom Spotlight Showcase set for March 9th. This came from Capcom's Twitter. Uh, tune into the Capcom Spotlight on March 9th for news on Resident Evil 4, Exo Primal, Monster Hunter Rise, Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, and Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Uh, there'll be a pre-show at 2.10 p.m. Pacific, and then the main show will start at 2.30 p.m. Pacific. What do you think about this? 
I'm like, I'm trying to like determine if there's any space for surprises. I mean, it's a, it's a good list of games they need to sell us, right? They have Resident Evil 4. They know that's going to be huge. So that could be your big tent pole to hold up. Here, that's our opportunity to teach people once again what Exo Primal is. Yeah, they, they should be doing that. This is exciting. I'm going to watch. Um, it, it's just like, okay, I mean, it's a lot of no quantities. Again, they have a lot of games to sell, but is there any chance for something fun to, to slip in there? They're going to do a Maximo, bring back Maximo bring or Bring back Maximo. Uh, but th that's the thing. I feel like Capcom's in a weird place right now where I don't even know what they could announce. Like, oh, right. things that well, would like, get still us doing Resident Evil, Right, they're still doing Resident Evil 4. So, like, the uh, the big question of, like, what do they do in terms of remakes after 4 is still up in the air. And I, I think, obviously, there's other Resident Evils they're going to they're gonna do. But do they start, like, looking around at Dino Crisis? Do they take a chance on that? Animusha, I mean, I, baby. Um, Animusha, you get your Animusha going. You yeah. get your auto, auto modelista. Why not? Let's do it. <laughs> Why not? Exactly. Yeah. That cell shaded era where it's just, like, everything uh -huh. had to be cell shaded. What a time. It, it holds up. It's not a fun game, but it, it holds up with the way it looks. It does. It does. Um, I do think we'll probably get the Resident Evil 4 demo that day. Uh, the special demo, whatever they were talking about. That sounds right. Um, yeah. Maybe some Street Fighter 6 something or other, like a character or like maybe a demo. Like yeah, there's, a like, there's like a couple more characters to reveal, right? So this is probably the right time to do it. And then, and then it's just all out. Here's just a blitz of marketing for that game until it comes out. I'm, I'm so excited for Street Fighter yep, 6. It too. looks like so much fun. Yeah. Um, do you think, real quick, after Resident Evil 4, do they remake 5 and 6? I don't I think don't so. I know. It I don't doesn't think feel so. Right. I go back and forth on it. I think with 5, like it's, there's a lot more work to be done than just uh, making it more HD. It's already an HD game. <laughs> uh, that, I mean, I, they would remake it with RE Engine, so... Uh, and then they, it's not just taking the content because they probably would have to edit out some of the stuff that was uh, controversial at the time, but would be much more controversial now in terms mm -hmm. of how they're portraying people from Africa. Um, so I, I don't know if they want that heat. I think Capcom might be like, no, there's other things we could do here. Let's actually just do Code Veronica. Yeah. Let's, and then, and then, yeah, then maybe Dino Crisis and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Really interesting stuff. But finding out if Dino Crisis is ever going to return. Grub, that's so far away. If I want to know what's coming to Mom and Grub shops today, where would I look? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show host each and every weekday. I don't know if Kev has the music, so there's no I'm playing it in my head. Don't worry. It's, the button's going. Yeah. I don't know why it's not playing. The so. button's going, everybody. I'm dabbing. Oh, wait, yeah, just, the dab is the music. Hear? I don't hear it. Do uh, they hear it? They, they can hear it now. They can hear it. That's what's up. That's so great for everybody that's hearing it. It's not me. Uh, is it over? <laughs> it is over. It Yay. Is over. Top the end of it. Gosh. Uh, out today, we have Patch Quest on PC and Wolong Fallen Dynasty on PS4 and 5, Xbox One and X and S and PC. It's also on Xbox Game Pass, so you can check that out. Um, the, uh, the chat says they never heard it at all, so that's, that's fun. <laughs> I hummed it. They heard, they heard me humming. That's what matters. Um, can they hear me at all now? Can they hear me at all? Because now they're saying no audio. No, they're they're. I think they're just saying no audio for, for the jingle. Wait, they hear me. We're no, good. No, no, no. We're no, good. It everyone, streaming. it stops streaming. Uh, <laughs> it's if, not streaming at all. <laughs> if you, I hate that. Like I was literally like, "Fuck, did it? Did it?" <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, remember, you can check out our review of Wolong over on the Kind of Funny X Cast. Um, I think that was Mike and Andy. Um, and Blessing, maybe, uh, that we're reviewing that one. So you can go check that out. Um, now it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where you can correct us when we get things wrong live during the show. Um, let's see. Nanobiologist says, some info about Detective Pikachu box office numbers. It did $433 million. It was the second highest grossing video game adaptation behind Warcraft. Um, $433 for a Pokemon live action movie is like, it's good, but it's not, like, what you'd expect. Can I, t can I tell you what it's almost exactly equivalent to? I actually, try to, what other video game movie came out around that time that it's equivalent to? Sonic the I'll give Hedgehog. You, I'll give you a hint. It stars Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Doom. Rampage. Oh. Pokemon should make more money than Rampage. Yes. It was like $428 million for Rampage or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, so. that, that's, that explains it all. That explains yes. it all. Um. Let's see. That's it. We nailed it. So we proud rule. of us. 
Yeah. We're fantastic dudes doing fantastic things. Um, oh, yeah. Some cool stuff for you. Uh, after this, we're about to be doing a really, really, really cool experimental Fortnite stream. We're going to be playing with you guys, the community. Sancho West is here. Snowbike Mike's here. They're going to be shout casting while uh, Andy and Nick and Joey and them play in the other room. It's going to be a blast. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, but before all of that, Grub, where can people find you? And thank you so much for your first real appearance on this show. No, thank you. This was it's so much fun. Thanks for reaching out and saying, hey, we're talking about that Nintendo thing. You should come on there and talk about it. That's that's awesome. I appreciate when anyone does something like that, but especially you, Tim. Especially you. Thank you. Uh you guys can find me, Giant Bomb. Just hang out with Giant Bomb. Uh twitch.tv slash giant bomb. You follow us there. We'll we'll, we'll make stuff happen. I, I I do game mess mornings every week, every week that well, every week except for Tuesday where we do the bomb cast. And you'll find that on twitch.tv slash uh, giant bomb at eleven a.m. Eastern. 8 a.m. Pacific. Uh, it's a lot like this show. I just stole the format and I did Great. it myself, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, and so, yeah, I already did one this morning, came on here, did it again. I'm like, I, I know all these stories. I'm ready to go. Um, but then I'm just Jeff Grubb on Twitter, but just hit me up on Giant Bomb. That's all you got to do. Hit him up. Go support the Giant Bomb homies. Um, next week, stay tuned, everybody. Like I said, uh, with the, the Greg and Jen situation going on right now, we're trying our best to, to uh, figure out what's going on. I will say that tentatively right now, it is said that on Tuesday, me and Gary Witta are going to host Games Daily together for the first time in many, many years. So, a Witta Wednesday on a Tuesday? A Witta Wednesday on a Tuesday, baby. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Um, but besides that, stay tuned for some fun. Probably going to be a lot of me and Bless. But you know what? I love doing shows with Bless, so that's not a problem to me. Um, I guess that's it. You guys have a great weekend. Hang out on the stream all day. Twitch.tv slash games, YouTube.com slash games. Go follow Jeff. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. Sancho, DM me, tell me if you like Creed 3.